Hey everybody, how's it going? Daryl here. So if you've downloaded the SoundSwitch shortcut, thank you so much. Your purchase definitely helps me being able to create content for all you guys. And if you have not heard of the SoundSwitch shortcut and you're just wondering what it's all about, I have a different video down below where I go through it. But it's basically like a preset pack of a sound switch show so that you don't have to spend hours just kind of designing this show and you can just hit the ground running and have a shortcut and get up and gigging and so I include a ton of different like lighting fixtures in here and if any of these fixtures like don't apply to you you can just feel free to delete them it won't break anything but this light show is meant to be extensible so that you can add your own fixtures or go as you grow because you're probably going to have new lighting fixtures than you have this year next year in this video I'm just going to go over that process of adding new fixtures and just giving you the down low and there's like four different groups of lights. There's the up lights, the movers, the pixel bars, and the dance floor washes. So I'm gonna go through each example just to show you like what it will take to add your own lights. It's been highly requested, so this is the video where we do that. So here's the up lights, and there's four unique addresses in the design of this show. And so this menu is accessible from show DMX map under view. So you can just select like the manufacturer and your fixture type. We'll just say it's the Slim Par Q12. So we're gonna go to add multiple. You wanna add to a group, let's add four. And just remember that if you have more than four fixtures, you do patching. And patching is basically you take the number of fixtures you have and you divide it by the number of unique addresses that you have programmed in. So, okay, four, click next. So yeah, click auto address. So it adds these addresses four numbers apart because this is a four channel fixture. Then you add, so you can see they're added here. So within this menu, this is the four up lights right here. So we have to go through each auto loop. So let's start with the first one. Let me collapse this real quick and let me get collapse all these other fixtures. Again, like if any of these fixtures don't apply to you, feel free to delete them. Yeah. So here we have our group that we just added, the slim pars. So basically what you want to do is you want to copy and paste each line and paste it in here. Let me look for one that has intensity overrides and color overrides. All right, for this one, for example, so you want to copy like the intensity override on this group layer track. And then you want to t copy and paste each line. So you want to copy and paste each line so that you retain the design and the flow of the show. And to be honest, if you want to do your own thing, I mean, the police aren't going to be coming at your door. This is your show. This is your programming. And this is just a shortcut to get you started. But you might have a different artistic vision or you want to tweak things. And it is totally permittable. But this is basically what you do. You do that for each of these auto loops then you need to go into the static scenes and you need to adjust them so for example these are all like static colors so you need to go to your slim pars and you have to know like what your light has like these Chauvet ones don't have like white and amber or wait I think they have amber but they don't have white and UV so when I'm trying to do this like antique whites with lights that have amber and white, I would just try to mix those two in some sort of variation. But for this one, I might just choose like an RGB amber color just because of the limitations of the light. So you choose a color, click apply, choose the intensity, and there you go. And that pretty much takes care of all of these color ones. And then for the strobes, you need to edit all of these. So highlight the entire group, turn them on, raise the intensity, change the color and also apply the strobe. There's these various group strobes. So if you're trying to do like the up lights, then make sure you just like change the up lights. Make sure you turn your up lights on for this white trigger up light and then the alternate chase, same thing. So it could be white, red, white, red. And then on the other one, red, white, red, white. Okay, the up lights were the second easiest. So let's get to the third easiest second hardest oh and really quick before I delete these even though I deleted a couple you'll want to make sure that they are wash primary in this category this just helps you with auto scripting if you decide to do that later and assign them to group one up lights are going to be group one remember during performance mode you have four different intensity groups so up lights is the first one so they are mapped to group one intensity. So next are the movers. So movers are slightly different than what I originally 
had in my first video. One of you viewers gave me a suggestion, so I am following it. And this is very timely because I just got these lights and I need to add them. So, okay, manufacturer, arrow. Some of you might be asking like, should I use like the one with more channels or fewer channels? It doesn't matter. Usually if it has more channels, it has built-in macros that you can leverage through DMX. And a lot of the time, like, like for this particular mover, you get two extra channels for like fine tilt and fine pan which you're letting sound switch take control of the movement. So you really don't even need those two extra channels, but what the heck, I'm just gonna click 12. So don't add multiple. We're not gonna add these into a group this time. So you just add these two. And remember at the bottom, let's assign them the group to assign their auto scripting category. So spot primary, you can also do like mover primary if it's like a moving head beam or wash all done there. And see how we collapsed all these things. Let's collapse our up lights. So I have two groups, mover one and mover two. So I was putting like, cause this light shows designed to have two movers. So if you have like four movers, you can patch them. The reason I chose to do that is because the majority of people that have like four or eight movers are going to be using two movers at some point. So if you just patch it, the light show will work with two movers or four movers or eight movers and you just don't have to maintain different projects for the different number of movers you have. So I have these two groups, mover one, mover two. As you can see, there's like a bunch of movers in here. And some of these individual lines have like intensity and color data. It's not supposed to anymore. All of like the movement data, color and intensity is all gonna be retained on this group track. But I'm just expanding this to like show you what's in there. I will probably eventually clean this up someday. So I have one mover here and another mover there. So I just drag and drop this into this group. And I drag and drop this mover into mover two. That's basically all you have to do with the auto loops, at least with all of this track data for the auto loops. So now we need to go to positions. You need to adjust the positions to fit like all these other ones. So some of the time they're gonna be facing the same way. So stage left. So I select both of these and then I put them here. Stage right, up. So my up isn't like a straight up facing the ceiling. It's more of like a facing upwards in relation to the dance floor. And then down and then crossed over. Same thing like one mover will be here. The mover one will be on the left and mover two will be on the right and vice versa for this other position. See, so yeah, I just do this with all of these and just note that your mover may have like some unique functionality. And I actually learned that these arrow spot sixties do like the complete opposite pan, like it's inverted out of the box. So I am inverting it on the fixture so that it matches what is here. That's the only mover that I've encountered that functionality with. Just a fun quirk. Okay, and this is totally optional, but next you need to like add some attribute cues and all these attribute cues are already like dispersed through all of these auto loops. So you just need to adjust like the ones that already exist. And to be quite frank, I need to clean these up a little bit. So only focus like on the movers and the gobos. These are just some random names. You have to look at your own manual and see like what the addresses are or like plug them in and just Play. So you hi so you highlight the group and these are just gobos. So select a gobo. So this is dots. So you can just like play around and look at these addresses and be like, oh, 76 looks like dots. And I don't know if it does. This is just an example. Click apply. And then four dots. Same thing. Pick a gobo. And then don't forget about like the open one. Just like usually zero. And then same with like some of the other functionality like frost on, frost off, like your focus, like your zoom angle, prism on, prism off, like if there's a second prism, the rotation, like fast, slow. So yeah, like I said, focus. I would do that for the focus attribute queue. There's a couple of other like attribute fields that you can adjust. So you can create your own attribute cues and drop them here on the timeline. This is your light show, so do what you want. Next, we have to adjust the static scenes. Same thing as the moving head washes. You just need to add them, turn them on. And most beams don't have a natural white. So just do white, do what makes sense. I think you could even do yellow. And so, just another note that these are kind of like your first dance static scenes. So instead of it having it be on through, you can choose like a position. So let's say down, I want them like down in front of me and you can like edit the position like on the fly at the gig. 
because sometimes straight in front of you is going to be different in relation to where your DJ booth is, just depending on the venue. That's just how it is. So you could just tweak it a little bit and be like, oh, Dan is more like here. Or you can just adjust and be like, this is what I want for the first dance. And so you can click apply and you can adjust this. Oh, and then you want to change this to down. So these are like your first dance scenes for like movers. And you can also create one for like cake or one for their grand entrances. And someone asked me about like, how do I do a follow spot? Well, if you have engine lighting, this interface right here is a touch screen and that is super cool. And it's like super easy to use. But if you're using like a normal laptop, you could just highlight this and then you can just use your mouse or trackpad and just kind of like move along where you need the spots to point. It's not the most elegant solution. I hope Sound Switch comes with a better interface, but this is what we got for now. And then same thing with like the strobes, adjust like the mover strobes, white trigger mover, make sure that they're on for this scene. Same with the alternate chase. And so one of the reasons why you're paying for these presets is because of the pixel animations, because this is incredibly hard to do complex pixel animations. And even if you have the design, it's incredibly hard to copy and paste them. It's extremely tedious. Like I just added these, like the Chauvet Well Sticks 180s. And I pretty much just copied line for line from what I had programmed from the both tubes. And it took me almost five hours. Five hours to copy in every single line for like 32 auto loops. Well, I guess 31. And I think I set the static scenes too. So you are welcome to do that same process with your lights. I'll just open this one just to kind of show. It's kind of nice because you can just turn off your brain and just mindlessly copy and paste. You can like put on your favorite TV show or just do it while your family is chilling and watching some Netflix. So basically just kind of like the washes, you just copy and paste each line. And so this light show is designed to have like 16 individual pixel mappable zones. And I have a different video like on pixel mapping. I'll have a link in the description below. And so you are welcome to just yeah copy and paste this and put it for like any like you have like the Astera tubes, which I've done in the past and I might add to this shortcut too. If you're interested, let me know and I will be sure to put more priority to adding that. And you can also just like have attribute cues and I have like attribute cues for like this both tube here, as you can see in this bottom left-hand corner. But yeah, you can just do that as well with your pixel tubes, put them in a attribute queue mode. And just one small thing too, if you're adding your own pixel mappable fixtures, all right, make sure you add the movers to group three. I lied. Movers are group three. Pixel tubes are group two. Movers are group three. Group three, movers, group two, pixel tubes. So make sure that these are multi-cell primary if you want to be able to use these in like an auto scripting. Sound switch has some built-in like pixel chases. And if you're using like an attribute queue type mode, then just have it be a wash, not actually a multi-cell. These take up a ton of room. Um, You can just like, kind of stash all of the fixtures into like less space that you're not using. So as you can see here, I can like drag and drop all these well sticks and then I could adjust their addresses or I can just put them here. And if you're never going to buy the Chauvet well sticks, you can just go ahead and delete them. So it's not like so cluttered. Cause I thought about just keep adding more and more and more fixtures, but it just makes this ven this menu look so cluttered. So the same instructions apply to like all these static scenes. For example, like purple, I guess like the main difference is when you have like a pixel mappable fixture, you have to expand these multi-cell groups, select the fixture type, and then you can like adjust the color, adjust the intensity, and it will do it for all of them. So you don't have to do each individual line. And then I guess the one caveat that's a little bit different is like this white trigger. Let's use the well sticks again, for an example. So like the first three tubes aren't doing anything, but the fourth one, all of the lights are on. All the zones are on. So this is just one fixture and it just creates this nice little chase. Okay, and the last one, the last group is wash dance floor. I have three different washes in their wash effects. One, two, and hex. So all you have to do is find a mode of your like light that you want to use as a wash. It could be one of your pars. It could be anything. Don't do one of the multi-cell styles. For example, show of a core three by three. So nine channel mode is the one that's just a single color. Add it. It's group four. It's wash secondary. Let's collapse these lines. You just drag and drop it into here. And that's it. It should work. 
all of these auto loops, the group has the intensity and color data. So you don't have to worry about like the individual ones and copying and pasting among them. And then of course, in the static scenes, you have to go in and change the color for each static scene, add the strobes for the appropriate spot, like the strobe wash, and then you'll be good to go. And if you already own all the same fixtures as me, then you are in luck. And I'll continue to try to like update this light show to like add more and more fixtures. And so if it's not there, it may be in the future. So just shoot me an email and so yeah, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them down below and please smash like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.